What's up guys, we are to here with another Marvel Strike Force video and in this video we're going to talk about the raid teams. Yes, we're going to talk about raid teams because they are falling off. Oh my god. Most of these raid teams that we have right now in the game, they are trash. They cannot hold up to incursion on difficulty 6 and uh, it's time for them to retire and we should get ready for that. So in this video we're going to talk about which teams have been falling off the most what you can do in order to prepare for that and uh, i'm going to give you a mutant option that might help you on the incursion rates and as always if you like the information on these videos make sure you share it with your friends on facebook and discord if you're new to my channel make sure you subscribe for more marvel strike, marvel, marvel strike force content <laughs> and make sure you smash that like button like a boss okay so who's an absolute boss is my alliance big shout out to the arctic circle what is this we have been doing great on the raid season we are at uh, we are usually top 50 or so and uh, we are doing the incursion difficulty six now we have an announcement that uh, new raids are coming you're going to get uh, alpha raid five i don't know it's strange because right now we have gamma four difficulty five and from the data mines there will be some alpha raid 5 we'll see about that and for these incursion raids at the level that we are playing some of the teams they don't hold up anymore or because they don't have enough focus or because they don't have enough energy generation or because they are just not viable overall so let's talk about that and which teams are really falling off quite fast it's a, it's a snowball effect because as soon as you don't get enough focus and damage and so on you start timing out you have to double tap nodes and it's just not good overall so first team we're going to talk about is death seed that seed is a legendary team that was presented to us last year on the journey to unlock apocalypse and this team is doing fine on difficulties below six on difficulty six this team starts to struggle quite a lot because their damage is just not good enough and their stats is also no, not good enough this was a problem that they had from the beginning that they don't let, they don't have a lot of health the damage is okay uh, if you don't play it properly the damage is definitely going to be compromised and the team has been falling off and on difficulty six they quite don't hold up anymore on the first two nodes you can still use the the full team but on the boss node they struggle quite a lot they get literally one shot right away i'm going to present to you in this video a solution for that so make sure you stay tuned until the end of the video but for now this is a team that is just not holding up you have to gear them up to gear t17 whether you like it or not because of apocalypse you have to make sure that you get your big boy apocalypse so one way or another you'll have to invest on this team so it would be really nice if this team would hold up for a little bit longer and hopefully my solution that i'll present you at the end of the video will help out with that but uh, once again for lower difficulties the team still works fine and if you have a new raid you should still be able to do the first two or three difficulties with uh, the dead sea team level 95 it's not because they need it it's because it's a requirement of using them in other game modes if you are using them in cosmic crucible and alliance wars but for the raid specifically on difficulty six i think level 92 level 93 maybe level 94 is enough so you can save a little bit of gold on that now let's talk about rebirth man this rebirth team is a team that i really like but it, oof, they just fall off so fast now because of the position i use they have a little bit more value because they get a little bit more turn bar and uh, if you use the special of carter in certain nodes rather than the ultimate you're also going to get some additional value on them but they are definitely falling off even with all hp all the armor all those things that they got the focus and the damage is no longer as good as other teams and it seems like we have a new bio team in the horizon is it going to be a team with lizard who knows it will be great right but probably not but yeah 
So this team is falling off. Uh, other problems that this team has is that they don't have energy on spawn. And because of that, you cannot seem with this team. So sometimes you seem and you win, other times you seem and you lose. It's an absolute F fest. And because of that, their value is greatly diminishing. Now, if you are thinking about doing incursion raids on difficulty six, you definitely have to use the Bifrost, the, the, the river team. And you need to take them to levels that are absolutely ridiculous. Level 95, gear tier 15, bare minimum. Captain America and Captain Carter, you should take, you should take them a little bit higher. Maybe gear tier 16, maybe gear tier 17, maybe even gear tier 18. Just keep in mind that if you take a character like Captain Carter to gear tier 18, whenever this team drops, which will be in less than six months for sure, then uh, Captain Carter will have zero value and she consumed all your gear. So if you are thinking about taking any of these characters to Dark Dimension 6, focus on Captain America rather than the other ones, because whether it is Captain Carter or Asian Venom, both of them will fall off quite fast in the very, very near future. Level 95 is a must-have, gear tier uh, 15 must-have. Beyond that, be very, very careful as you should start saving your bio gear for the next character. One thing that really helps is making sure that your Asian Venom is 700 stars. You can get the character shards for him from the arena orbs. Uh, it's a 10% chance, but if you if you have them saved, it can be quite nice. Other thing that also helps is giving Isolate will level 5 to Asian Venom because he's going to get 20% more damage. It's very impactful, but uh, like I said, this team is falling off. Uh, any investment that you do right now will have uh, zero value in the future as this will be pretty much another Blitz team. Okay, so let's move on to the next team. We're going to talk about the Invaders. And this Invader team is something that has been working quite well. They have some major problems, which is they have zero flexibility. Yes, the Invader, the invader team, zero flexibility because you need Nick Fury for the energy. You need Kraken America for energy. You need the Iron Fist for reviving, healing, focus, and also stuns. You need Union Jack to make sure that everyone has crit chance and that Nick Fury gives energy. And you have to make sure that you have Bucky Barnes in order for you to have some damage. So it's quite problematic. It's quite sad that we have zero flexibility with this team. But at the end of the day, that allows you to have less investment for that for them. Other thing that you need to take into consideration is that you need to have Nick Fury, Kraken America and Iron Fist. It's, if you don't have this exact position, you are not going to have energy on spawn. You are not going to have uh, the full cooldowns all the time. You're not going to have the tank turning on your enemies. And that's extremely important whether you are trying to sim or just play it manually. Two characters that don't really matter if the, their position is Union Jack and Bucky Barnes. So don't worry too much about them. But the other three, they need to be exactly on the position that I have them right now or mirrored to the other side. Okay, so this team, like I said, does not require a lot of investment. If you have them between level 90 and level 85, they're going to do just fine. And uh, you don't need to, them, to have them like with a lot of teal gear. You can actually skip all the teal gear on them if you have them at level 95. It's something you have to decide. Should you put more levels? Should you put more gear? Right now, I'm on the mindset that you should put more levels rather than gear because gear is just so hard to obtain, especially if you are going through Dark Dimension 6. But if you are going to spend any kind of teal gear, do it on Iron Fist and do it on Nick Fury because those are the two most important characters. Nick Fury because he summons the minions and the minions are going to provide a lot of value. And Iron Fist because he's the character that applies the stuns and the revives. Make sure that you also have your Iron Fist with Skirmish Eyes Await because if he doesn't have enough focus to apply the stuns, then you are really crippling your uh, progress. Okay, so let's move on to the next team. By, uh, Bifrost? Where is my Bifrost? Yeah, the Bifrost is so good that you don't even need the full team. The only characters that you need is Val, Loki and Sylvie. Those are the two main characters of the three main characters of the Bifrost team. And uh, 
that's quite great because you have the flexibility that you don't have with other teams and that allows you to save a lot of resources. You can use Doctor Doom, you can use uh, Dormammu, you can use Deadpool, you can use Morgan of Fae, you can pretty much use almost any character as a fifth and the, the team is still going to provide the huge value. They are still going to perform amazing because yes, Sylvie, Loki and Val, they're just so powerful. It's ridiculous. Okay, so if you want to use the full Bifrost team, you don't need them very big. You need them pretty much at level 80, gear tier 15. If you are attacking the right targets, if you are stunning the right targets as well, they're going to do just fine. And uh, like I said, that's great because you don't have to make huge investments. But uh, probably the character you, don't, you have to invest anyway is Val. And some people are giving Val the Ice Weight to level 5. I think that's great. I think that's okay. Val will last for sure for a very long time. She is a must have Dark Dimension 6 character, probably Dark Dimension 7 and so on. So giving Ice Weight to level 5 for her, it's something that will have a lot of value in the long run. The other characters, not so much, so be careful. And like I said, I would rather use my old characters that I already invested in the past than investing on Battery Bill and uh, Teen Loki, Crocodile Loki. They, they are great. They are still fun to play with. They are part of the Cosmic Crucible meta, but uh, it's if you don't need it, why should you do it, right? Okay, let's move on to the tech team. And the tech team, we have uh, two options. We have uh, the Baron Avengers, which is a team that have been falling the, since, the, since launch. Let's be honest, since launch by Baron Avengers, they were trash. They were dead on arrival. And uh, Kang was the one that saved Bionic Avengers for a while. And it's still right now the best option. If you use these teams that I have right now on the screen, you can one-shot all the nodes on uh, difficulty 5 of the incursions. It needs a little bit of practice just to make sure that you know what you're doing. But uh, it's possible. Should you get them up? Probably not. There are rumors of a tech team coming up in the next 3 months. So I would start saving all my tech gear because you want to make sure that you have all the spiky balls. You want to make sure that you have all the laser torches and the charged with particles in order for you to get up that team as it will be a legendary team. And of course, legendary teams will have a lot of value. Okay, so yes, it can work. Is it something I'd recommend? I don't know. It's something that you really have to decide with your alliance. Should you really spend all these resources on characters that are absolutely outdated in order to progress a little bit more in raids? It's up to you to decide with your alliance. For the first node, I've been using Lady Death Strike, Spider-Man Big Time, Castle and Doctor Doom. This team allow you to one-shot the first node of the tech line. And then the second node and the third node, you just have to use Bionic Avengers with Kang. This is a lot of Eyes Away to Blue level 4 that will compromise your other teams and your other game modes that you care about. So be very careful with that as this is something that will change quite soon. Three months is a breeze in terms of Marvel Strike Force content. So once again, pay attention because you're really going to miss that origin gear. Okay, so with that said, with all the teams that now we know exactly are falling off, let's take a look at the solution for the mutant nodes where you don't have to use full dead seed in order for you to win. Okay guys, so let's take a look at this team in action. This is the team that I have been using right now. And yes, you saw it right, we are using Rogue. The reason why you want to use Rogue, it's because she's a horseman, of course. Or, or, or a horsewoman, I don't know how to say it. But yeah, so you want to use Rogue, then Apocalypse, then Archangel, Nemesis and Dark Beast. Yes, we are not using Magneto and that's fine because we are going to clone the enemy Magneto. Now, like I said at the beginning of the video, on the first two nodes, you still have to use the full Death Sea team. But for this boss node, I have seen a lot of people wiping on this node, including myself. And this team that we have on the screen is amazing. Guaranteed win as long as you know exactly what to do, right? So with Rogue, you want to turn your wind or uh, Cyclops or uh, Magneto on the enemy side or this, what's his name, Bishop. One of them you need to stop. In my opinion, the best target is going to be Magneto so it doesn't blind your entire team. And then you want to use your Dark Beast to clone the enemy Magneto. 
Rogue here, she's going to get more health and more damage from Apocalypse. She also gains more effects from Archangel. I think she gets more armor. And because of that, she's going to be super tanky. On top of that, she has all, all those evades, immunity, safeguards, speed ups, defense ups. Like, Rogue becomes an absolute beast here. And this is why you should use her. On top of that, because she's a mutant and because she's a horseman character, she's going to get tons and tons of energy from... Uh, Archangel, and that will allow her to spam the special and the ultimate, which are crucial for you to win on this node. So you can see I just used the special, and now I can use the special once again, or the stun, which one I prefer. I decided to go with the special. It didn't land even with the skirmisher as a white, that's fine. Either way, we are still gonna smack the face of these enemies. You have to pay attention to your apocalypse. If he's charged, you want to make sure that you do your isolate attacks to characters that you want to stun. Yes, if he's charged and he gains charges often in raids, you can use that possibility to stun crucial characters like Bishop or like Captain Sam. So we used our first clone to get Magneto. Now we're going to use the clone Magneto in order to blind all the enemies. And now you're going to try to clone another Dark Beast. You can also clone Emma Frost. You can also clone Captain Sam. Either of those characters are going to help you out in your journey. Okay, so we are going to turn and wind or stun. Okay, we're going to turn and wind Emma Frost. We could also have turned and wind Captain Carter. Either way, it wouldn't matter. You can see once again that Apocalypse is charged for the third time. And this will allow us to stun the problematic targets like uh, Dazzler, like uh, Captain Carter. So they don't ability block your team. So they don't uh, heal up the negative effects. And as you can see, like this combo of Rogue, Archangel and Apocalypse is just so freaking good. More armor, more damage, more energy, more healing, more buffs, more everything. It's, it's ridiculous. And if you are struggling in the past with these mutant boss nodes, it will be no longer the case if you start using this team. As you can see, it's quite phenomenal. Phenomenal? Yeah, phenomenal. <laughs> okay, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Which teams are falling off of the raid meta once again? Dead Seed, by Fro uh, no, Dead Seed and Rebirth are definitely falling off. And the other ones, be very careful with how you manage your gear, or you might compromise other teams that will come in the future, or even new raids, new raids coming up in the future that can also change the, the paradigm of the raid meta. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to smash that like button. And if you found the video helpful, make sure to share it to your friends on Facebook and Discord. If you're new to my channel, make sure to subscribe for more Marvel Sci-Force content. And I'll catch you guys later.